Hello, my beautiful creative friends. Um, I just wanted to come to you and talk a little bit about our magnolia frames. It does say home. Oh, it's upside down too. There we go. <clears throat> that might make a little more sense to you. Um, but this frame is very sturdy, very heavy duty. It's very customizable. So I want to talk a little bit about the different ways that you can decorate it. Um, but also just show you um, what all comes in the kit and a few tips for putting it together. So this is a completed frame. You can see that it has an outer frame and this is just paper, but it's a very nice print that looks real. And when I show you one that's in a kit, I'll show you that this is reversible. Um, so if, you, if your decor would be better with a gray frame, you can turn this over and it's gray instead of brown. And then this background paper is the very, very popular shiplap. Um, and that's just a piece of paper, but again, it looks like an actual, you know, kind of layered up pieces of ship, shiplap board. You've got the title. It comes with two titles, Home and Love. But this is so versatile. You can use, um, you know, cut out some things that you already have, cut something on the Cricut or silhouette and make this whatever you want it to be. You can put pictures in here. In fact, <clears throat> this opening is just shy of 12 by 12. So anything you do scrapbooking wise on 12 by 12 paper, you could just put your scrapbook page in here. And then the magnolia flowers, those are also included in the kit. They are paper, but when you fold them and attach them and put them all together, you get this nice dimension and you've got the flowers, the leaves, and then also the centers of the flower and these little sprigs that come off are a gold foil paper. So you get some really nice contrast there with the foil paper. So very, very pretty. Um, but I do want to give you, show you what comes in the kit and then also give you some ideas of how you might want to put yours together. So I'm going to start by just showing you the kit. And this is a very big kit you can see because the frame is very large. Um, the opening is 12 by 12 but then you've got this extra two inches on either side, so it comes out to a little, around 14 by 14 square. So I'm gonna open it up and show you what, what all is in here. First of all, you do have full color directions. So this is the front, and this shows that it does have the two words, love and home. It shows you a couple different arrangements of the flowers here in the corners, which is kind of what I did. I didn't do exactly the same arrangement as they did, but similar with the home. This one shows the gray side of the um, frame. So that's just taking the paper that is attached to the front and turning it over. And then putting the um, flowers in kind of a laurel or a half wreath on the bottom of that frame. When you open up the directions, it gives you even more ideas. And then here are the full directions. So it takes you step by step, preparing the leaves, doing the flowers, assembling the frame, and then doing the final decor here at the bottom. And I'm gonna walk you through those steps just a little bit, just to give you a few tips that I learned as I put mine together. Okay, so here is what else is in the kit. Um, let me just pull it all out so we can look at all of it, all of it at once. Okay, so starting here at the bottom, is the frame itself. So here is the outer frame. So you can see it is a completely separate piece of chipboard as the base of the frame. And it is, I don't know if I can get you this to where you can see it. It's fairly thick. I would say it's a little less than a quarter inch thick, but very heavy duty. You can see it doesn't really bend. I'm kind of doing a little boxing here. It really doesn't bend. It's pretty sturdy. It's gonna um, keep its shape. And um, it is white on the top, so you could, if you didn't want to put the wood grain, you could decorate this up. You could do some stamping on it. You could cover it with some other paper or fabric, um, whatever you want to match your decor. It is a separate piece, so you could wrap, um, if you were doing fabric or like maybe 
contact paper or duct tape, you know, whatever is kind of your style, you could actually wrap those ends around um, the outsides and have it completely covered. Okay, this is the base, and I wanted to point out a couple things on this. First of all, there's a little corner marked here and here. All four of the corners are marked, and those are a perfect 12 by 12. So if you are putting either that shiplap paper or some other type of 12 by 12 layout in here, you have your exact corner so that you don't have to guess if it's going to be centered once you put the frame on. And then up here, and these punch out, I'm not going to since this one hasn't been used, those punch out, those are the holes for hanging. So that punches all the way through, and when you hang it on the wall, you can put it onto nails or wall hangers, and it will hang nice and level that way. Once you attach these together, I mean, you really have a nice sturdy piece that's not going to do anything well over a quarter of an inch when it's put together. This is the frame, and you can see it's punching apart from that white, so it gives you a nice edge. This is the brown side, and like we talked about before, this side has a gray. It's still wood grain, and it's kind of a, an aged gray, so it gives you that kind of more of a barn wood look. In the center here um, are the words hope, home and love that you can punch out and use. The white would be discarded. And I'm going to keep working from the bottom because it kind of gives things in order. Here's that shiplap piece of paper. So it's 12 by 12 exactly. If you don't use it in your frame, like if you decide to put a different type of layout or maybe some pictures, but you decide not to use this, this would be available for you to use somewhere else. And it is, you know, that same cardstock weight that we have for the rest of our pattern paper. So nice and heavy um, for your scrapbook pages if you don't want to use it in your frame. Okay. And then here are all of the rest of the pieces that you punch out. And you can see there's a lot of stuff here. There's actually four sheets of things, starting with the leaves. Um, lots and lots of leaves. There's some big ones and some small ones, so you kind of get a variety. I didn't use nearly all my leaves. I'll show you my pile that I had left over. Um, you would definitely have some left to do other things, or if you wanted to put more on yours than I have, there's plenty there. Here are the flowers. It says large flower number one, and then it has a line going around these three sets of petals. So these three go together. So what I did is I punched these out. I followed these lines, and I put those three in a pile. And then here's another line that says large flower number two. So I put those three in a pile. And then here's medium flower number one. I put those three in a pile, medium flower two. There's another pile. So that when I got done, I had punched out all of these flowers, but I had them sorted by size and so that each pile had the, the three sets of petals to make one flower. So all together you have two large, one, two, three, four, four medium, and I think there's some more medium on the other page. Nope, no small. Okay, so two large, four medium, and then here are six small. So all together, what is that, 12 flowers? So you really have plenty to work with, um, depending on how many flowers you want to put on your um, frame. And then the last sheet of punch out are the ones that have the gold foil. And it's really kind of a gold, uh, a rose gold. Um, very, very pretty. Very, very shiny. They really catch the light. These that look like kind of little asterisks, those punch out. Let me see if I have one here that shows you what it looks like punched out. Punch out to give you the... Um, inside of the flowers, so those get bent up um, so that those um, give you that little sparkle on the inside of each flower. And just like the flower pages, these are labeled. So here is large flower center. So those two go together for one of your flowers. There's the other large flower. There's two large flowers. Each one has two of the gold centers. Here's the ones for the small flowers, and then here's the ones for the medium. So again, they're labeled. So I have my piles of the white leaves for each, um, or petals for each flower. I just stack two of these on top of each one. So, and so that when I'm putting my flowers together, I'm not trying to remember which ones go together. I've got the little stacks, I one at a time, and um, can get all my flowers put together. And then the last thing that we have here are these um, little stems, little branches. Um, kind of look like berries on them. And um, on these papers, they look kind of fat the same way, you know, these didn't look quite the same on the paper because they do an overbleed with the print so that when you punch them out, there's not a white edge. So what the actual stem looks like is that. So you can see it's a little more detailed 
than what it looks like here before it's punched out because it it has that overbleed. Okay, so here's my pile of leaves. All of these leaves were left over. So as you can see, there were plenty of leaves to finish my project. Um, you might want one with more leaves, and that's fine. You'll notice that I have um, bent these, and I kept one that I didn't bend. I actually have a couple here, one of the big and one of the small. Um, there's all the veins of the leaf are showing, and so it's not just a blank green. It does really have that detail. And then there is a score mark there. I think you can see it, at least on my screen, it looks like, right down the center. So when you're prepping these, you just fold that, and it folds real easy because it's already scored, and that just gives it that little bit more of dimension. And when you have this on your wall, you know, that gives you that shadowing so that you get the different shades of green as the light catches the different angles there with the folded leaves. And here's another small one. Again, it's got that score mark, so really easy to fold and have it ready to put on your project. And I wanted to show you a couple things with the leaves. Um, I left mine plain. I just folded them and stuck them on. And But you can... This one has liquid glass on it. Liquid glass is an amazing project product that I love that we sell. Um, it is a great adhesive, and we're going to talk about how to use it for an adhesive on the flowers. But it also is like an embellishment. This one, I just put that liquid glass on, so it just made the leaf shiny. Because if you think about magnolia leaves, they're kind of thick, they're shiny, um, and so that gives it more of the look. The way you do this is just squirt a little on there and then just take a paintbrush or um, somebody said they used a rubber glove because they didn't want to get on the fingers. I just put it on my fingers and as long as you wash fairly soon after that it seemed to come off fairly well. I think if you did a whole bunch of them at once without washing in between by the time you're done you'd probably have kind of a crusty um, dried liquid glass that would be kind of hard to get off but doing it just a little bit at a time maybe have a little white, wet paper towel next to you so you can just kind of um, wipe it off after every two or three leaves. That gives it a nice shiny look. Another idea is to use our shimmer brush. And I love shimmer brushes. I've talked about them before. This is a clear one. We have some that have pigment in them. This one is clear. Um, the sparkles in it have a little bit of a silvery cast, but you can see that also makes it shiny. But instead of being a smooth shiny, it's a shimmery shiny. So again, I just brushed a little and let it dry. Um, by the way, you do put your flowers on first and then you stick your leaves in. The directions back here show you that. I am going to talk a little more about putting the flower together. Um, but you prep your leaves, prep your flower, and then once you get your flowers in place, then you just stick your leaves in. And what I found, if I attached my flowers down, sometimes too much of the leaf stuck out. And so for a lot, especially of the larger ones, um, I did cut kind of the end of the leaf off and then tucked it under there um, so that just the amount of the leaf that I wanted to show showed. So that's just something that when you get to that step, I think it definitely helps to arrange your flowers first and get those attached securely and then put your leaves, but you might find that you need to trim your leaves down just a bit to make them fit. Now let's talk about the flowers, and I'm actually going to walk through putting one of them together. Like I said before, there's three pieces to each flower, two that are about the same size and then a smaller one. And then there are the two kind of astery looking pieces that you put in the center. For mine, I simply um, left them white, um, but a variation would be to add a little bit of ink to the edge. I'm just going to add a little bit of pink, and this happens to be smoothie. You could use a purple or a different shade of pink, whatever you want. But I do think it's nice, instead of sponging it all over, to kind of have it get darker around the edges. So that's why I'm kind of really hitting the edges, but then also brushing a little bit um, toward the edges so that you kind of get that ombre effect where it's whiter in the middle and then turning pink on the outside. Okay, so they're inked, 
So we're ready to assemble. Before you put the flowers together, you do want to shape them a little bit. Right now they're flat, and if you just started putting these together, you're going to have a very flat flower. But what makes this really nice is that it is a very dimensional project. And so you can roll the edges. You can do it just with your fingers, like that. Just kind of do it, and the paper will kind of keep its shape. I found using a pen, this is just a journaling pen, a pencil or a pen or a marker, something that you could kind of roll it. I found that that did it a little bit nicer. I just liked kind of having a uniform look. When I was doing it with my fingers, I found that some of them would, you know, it's just really hard to get them to all look uniform. So now I'm ready to assemble, and hopefully my liquid glass is flowing. Um, if you've worked with, oh, yes it is. If you've worked with liquid glass before, you know it's kind of tricky to keep it from drying out when you're using it. Um, you want to um, be careful not to just leave it open like this for very long. It has a very fine tip here at the end. And so I do sometimes have to use a pin or a needle to open it back up, but the best thing is if you can keep it open, and um, when you're done using it, or if you're not going to be using it for a couple minutes, like when you're assembling all of these flowers, if you get one done and you're kind of playing with it, you might want to clear this out before you um, just set it down for, you know, five minutes. It doesn't take long for that internal part to dry. And one thing to make sure that it done is kind of do a few little pumps like that. Did you see that little bubble pop out? So kind of have a paper towel so it catches that. I'm squeezing it, and I'm able to squeeze it. Air's coming in and out. So by doing that a few times and maybe even popping it down, you know, doing this to kind of get the bubbles to loosen up um, before you just set it there can really make your liquid glass be a lot easier to work with. Okay, so I layered those two, two together. Actually, I don't offset them 100%. You know, like you could do them completely opposite. I do them almost because I have this third layer and I don't want to line up exactly with that bottom one. So I could have three layers or all three a little bit different angle. That's just my preference. But play with it until it's the way you do, that you want it. And then we've got these centers. And what I've found, it's easier to attach the two centers together before you put them in than after. It gets really hard, especially on the small ones. It gets really hard to work in that little small space. So if I attach these together, and I do want to offset, they are the same so I want those, those little pieces coming out. You want them to not line up with the one below. So I'll set them just a little, fold them back up. And then I'm going to attach that to the center of my magnolia flower. And again, once it's in there, you can work with folding those up a little more if you feel like they got flattened out too much. You can definitely play with these after they're attached. So here's my corner of my frame with the white one. And here's the pink one. I've got just a couple more flowers I wanted to show you. Three, I actually have three more. I use shimmer brushes. So this one I used the um, Sugar Plum Shimmer Brush and I just painted all of the leaves with that before I assembled. I let it dry and then I assembled just like I did before. But you can see that made the whole thing um, Sugar Plum colored and shimmery. So that's one idea. This one I used the Sugar Plum Shimmer Brush but I only did it on the edges, kind of like we did with the stamping. And so you can see the white in the center, but I do have that sugar plum color on the tips. And it is um, sparkly because of the shimmer. This one I did with the clear shimmer brush. All of the white I covered with clear shimmer before I assembled. In person, there's definitely a difference there from the flat white um, on the camera. I'm not sure it's picking that up too well, just for a little more fun.
you can order these kits on my website, um, rebeccabrown.ctmh.com. Um, once you're on the website, there is a heading at the top called Promotions. And the very first thing under that is National Paper Crafting Month, because that's what we're celebrating with this project. Um, National Paper Crafting Month, and then it says Frame It Up, which is the kind of the name of this um, frame. So if you click on that, you will see the page where you can read more about them and you can order. These kits are cheaper if you buy more. So if you buy two of the frames, it knocks a dollar or five dollars off the price of each one. So whether you want two or maybe you want to make one for gift, one for a gift and one for yourself, you save ten dollars total on those two frames. So really good deal. Um, maybe find a friend that you wants to order them with you. Um, and then at the third level, if you buy three of the frames, it takes ten dollars off the cost of each one. So altogether, over the over all three of them, you save a total of thirty dollars.